morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. My name's Alec, and I'm happy to welcome you to worship with Asbury today. Go ahead and let us know you're worshiping with us. Pull out your phone. That's right. You can pull out your phone in church just this once. Uh, and send the word here to 281-305-1069. If this is your first time here, just type the word welcome. Thanks for letting us know you're at worship today. Today is your first chance to participate in our annual An Angel Tree Ministry. We're really excited about the kids we're going to be able to minister to this year. Pasadena ISD has a program specifically for kids who are homeless, in foster care, or in great hardship. All those are the kids we are going to be helping this year. The kids who were affected by the fire a few weeks ago, a family of kids who is being raised by a single dad who has terminal cancer, Kids living on their grandmother's sofa this week and the aunt's floor the next. These are all kids who we get to bring Christmas cheer to this year. Here's all the info you need. Grab a name from the tree in the main hall or the sign of genius we'll be emailing out tomorrow. Bring one fun gift and one needed gift back on December 12th. And after worship that day, we'll be having a church lunch together and a wrapping party. The school district will pass out our gifts the next day. We have 50 kids, and every single one of them deserves to know that they're loved and cared for this Christmas. So go check out the angel tree today. It's right out there in the lobby across from the coffee machine, in case you miss it. After worship today, right at noon, we'll be eating some pizza lunch together and decorating the church for Christmas. So stick around and join us. It's right after this service. You don't even have to go anywhere. Just stand up and help out. Now, last week we had a typo. That was my fault. Uh, the Children's Ministry Christmas program will actually be Thursday, December 9th at 6 p.m. in the sanctuary. And finally, on December 5th, you won't want to miss this, the United Methodist Women's Annual Christmas Cookie Sale. All of the money United Methodist Women raise will go to a mi towards ministry and missions. Thank you all for worshiping with us today. If you're worshiping with us on Facebook, go ahead and say hello down in that comment section down there. And welcome to Worship with Asbury. Well, good morning. It is such a joy to be in the house of the Lord together this morning. We invite you, if you are in the sanctuary, to stand as you are willing and able, as we have a chance to join our voices in song together this morning. If you are at home, the words will be on the screen. If you want to stand or sit, you can do that and follow along with the words. Let's sing together this morning.
that are here this morning are welcome to come join Miss Paula in the front for a very special children's message. Good morning, friends. Come on up. If you're here in the sanctuary, I want to say hello to any friends worshiping with us at home today. We are glad you are all here. Happy four days before Thanksgiving. You, all, you guys are going to go home and cry because there's no school next week, right? You're so sad. You're not? You're ready for the break? Okay, so how many of you have carried a backpack either to school or maybe to daycare? You guys use backpacks? You know what a back? Yeah, yeah, right? Okay, so I have a backpack here. There's nothing in it, right? It's very light. Um, you want to come help me? I need a volunteer. Logan, I saw your hand up. You want to come help? Okay, Beth, you want to come help? Okay, so we're going to put this backpack on Beth this way. Is it light or heavy? It's light, right? There's nothing in it, right? Okay, so now I want you to think about some things that you worry about. Things that you worry about. Have that in your mind. Worry means when you feel nervous or upset, maybe concerned, something that's troubling you, right? And when you're scared, exactly. So, Beth, you want to put this on? Okay, anybody? Okay, Pinky, you want to come help? Have a seat, Beth. Nope, 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 nope. All right, Pinky. All right. So we all have worries, right? So what's some things that worry you guys? We may be worried about bullies, right? May have bullies at school or in our neighborhood. We may be scared of the imaginary things underneath our beds. I know when I was a kid your age, I was scared of the imaginary things under my bed. We may be worried about maybe a test or an assignment at school, right? I know I get nervous or worried when I have to go to the doctor. Anybody else get nervous when they have to go to the doctor? And then I worry about my friends and family who maybe are in the hospital or maybe have to have surgery. And then I also worry when I know there's a hurricane, a flood, or a thunderstorm coming. Okay. All right, Pinky, how's that feel? It's heavy? How heavy is it? Pretty heavy, right? Different from when there was no worries in there, right? Great. Thank you for helping. You can take that off now. So look how heavy it is now, right? With all of these worries, look how heavy the backpack is and how it can weigh us down. Now, in our Bible story today from the book of Matthew in the New Testament, it tells us that there's, there was a large group of people who were gathered around as Jesus was teaching. Now, Jesus said, don't worry about whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear. Look at the birds in the air, he said. They don't worry about where their next meal is coming from. The Heavenly Father, or God will take care of them. And why worry about your clothing, Jesus asked. He said, look at all the flowers out in the field. They grow, they don't need any clothing or worry. If God takes care of all of those things wonderfully, the birds and the wildflowers, he will surely take care of you. So worrying is when we're always thinking about what we need and not trusting God to take care of us. And we learn from our Bible story today that God takes care of the birds and the flowers he feeds them and makes sure that the flowers have enough water and sunshine each spring so that they can grow. So instead of worrying, we can trust that God will provide for our needs too. When we are worried, we can pray and tell God all of our problems, and we can trust that he will hear us and give us what we need. We can practice gratitude, which is thanking, thankfulness, 
thanking God for everything. And it can take worry and change that into peace because of God's help. We can focus our thoughts on God, thanking him for all the good and some of the bad things that happen, and that will lead us to peace. And peace is when we have a quiet, calm state of mind and we're not upset or bothered by anything. Now, does this mean that we can just sit around and wait for food and clothes and all the things to just drop out of the sky? No, no. God provides for the birds, but he doesn't throw the food into their nest, right? They have to work and go gather up their food, right? And God provides clothing for us by giving our parents jobs so that they have money to buy us clothing and food. Or maybe you have friends and family who give you food or clothing, right? So God provides. So in my backpack, if I turn all these worries back over to God and talk to God about it, God, I'm worried when I go to the doctor. God, I'm worried about my grandma in the hospital. God, I'm really worried about that test that's coming up. I'm afraid of the dark, and I'm worried about sleeping alone in my bed. I'm really worried about the person at school that's not so nice. When we pray to God and talk about all of that with him, look what it can bring us. Somebody read it to me. Peace. It can give us peace. And look how light my backpack is now. I turned all of those worries over to God, and God gave me peace. And now my backpack is light, and I don't have a heavy load to carry or weighing me down. I did take him out. I turned him over to God. That's exactly right. So we can have faith that God will provide and help us with our worries, but we have to do our part as well. But just remember, our part doesn't include worry. It includes seeking God's what? Peace. Exactly. Will you guys pray with me now? Dear God, we thank you for taking care of us. Help us talk to you and trust in you so we can have peace instead of worry. In Jesus' name we pray, and together we all say, amen. amen. We're going to have wow worship if you'd like to join us. We'll walk, we'll walk down the hall, and if you want to stay in the sanctuary, there's some worship bags out in the lobby. Well, good morning, and welcome to Worship at Asbury today. I'm Lindsay, the pastor here, and it's great to be with you on uh, the weekend before Thanksgiving. I hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving later this week. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. I started to ba feel bad for Paula when my daughter, Beth, was being a And then I thought, you know what? She, she asked her up to get up there, so it's on her. Uh, Anyway, uh, I have a couple of folks I'd like for you to be praying for this week. Ernie Alsobrook has been in the hospital now for like two months, and then he's just having a rough go of it. So please be keeping him in your prayers. Dorothy Fink had heart surgery a couple weeks ago. That went well, but then this past week she fell and broke her hip. So um, please be keeping her recovery um, in your prayers as well. Um, you know, I, I tend to prefer uh, spontaneous prayers from the heart most of the time. And yet every once in a while I come across a prayer and I just feel like that person leading me in prayer caused me to pray about things in a way that I wouldn't have before. So this morning um, I wanted to share a prayer from a sister in Christ who lives in New Zealand. Let's pray together. God eternal and righteous one, the one who created the heavens and the earth, we gather to give you thanks for breath that fills us with your life for love that softens our hearts, for beauty revealed at every turn. Jesus Christ, redeeming and forgiving one, who is always faithful and merciful, we gather to give you thanks for renewal, for the way you transform our lives, for peace calming the chaos of our souls, for hope restoring our faith. Holy Spirit, sustaining and compassionate one, who calls us into relationship with the living God, we give you thanks for caring when our hearts are aching, for giving us friends who are supportive in times of need, for generosity lavish and overflowing. God who created the earth and heavens, eternal, redeeming, and sustaining one, we gather to give you thanks for you. 
for the universe immense and unknown, for the earth on which we live, for humankind made in your image, for the way you entered human history as one of us, for the sacrifice you made for all of us, for dying that we might live, for the wonder of your indwelling presence, for the comfort of your guidance and direction, for drawing us together as one body. Through your will, we are made whole. Through your love, we are renewed. Through your abiding presence, we become one community. And so today we say thank you, God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer throughout all eternity. God, we are going to be grateful this week at one point or another, and we're going to thank you for our homes and our family and the food before us. But we wanted to make sure that first we just thank you for you. Thank you for being the kind of God that you are. Thank you for your love and your grace that outmatches any sin or problem. We do lift our sins to you. We ask that your grace will wash us clean again. We lift up our loved ones who are going through hard times. We name them before you in our hearts now. We ask that you be that sustaining one, the Redeemer, God. God, let us never lose sight of the one to whom we should be giving thanks for every single thing. And we pray, Lord, that we would be people who would lean into that way of thinking, that gratitude life, so that we can have peace in our own lives, but also be peacemakers in the world. We're going to pray a prayer of blessing and thanks for the offering we're about to receive. We thank you for the way you're transforming people's lives. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Some of you all might have seen in a church email this past week uh, that you might remember that last Sunday at the end of our prayer, at the end of our message, we said a prayer. And in that prayer, we said, God, if there's anyone who needs to accept Christ into their hearts today, let them do it today. Well, unbeknownst to us at the time, there was a woman who's been coming to our blessings box for a year, and she's been feeling nudged to come inside, but she was afraid. Last Sunday, she finally came in. Rose, a church member who speaks Spanish, spoke with her, took her down to Alienta de Vida, and she accepted Christ in our youth room last Sunday. And I just thought, isn't it incredible? We prayed for it, and God was faithful to deliver and so I know you're going to want to continue to lift up this woman and her family in your prayers, but it was just a reminder to me that um, all of us who are here, who are joined together in service and in prayer and in our offerings, um, God is doing transformational stuff in people's lives through that, and I just want to thank you for it. This is the time for our offering. There's offering plates in the back of the room. At home, you can place a check in the mail or give in any of these ways. I want to thank you for being partners in ministry here at Asbury.
God, thanks for this moment of worship. We pray, Lord, that as we turn to Scripture, that we would um, discover our story being found within your story today. And so, Holy Spirit, speak whatever you want to. Uh, we are listening. We give this time to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. Now go ahead and take a seat. You know, earlier this week, I was sitting on the couch with one of my kids, and he was having a day. You know when a couple of things go wrong, and all of a sudden it just like opens the floodgates, and now they're telling you everything that could possibly be considered wrong with their entire lives? He was telling me how disappointed he was in himself about how he handled the situation with his brother, how upset he was that he was scared at the doctor, how frustrated he was that he couldn't get his spelling words right. I mean, it just kept going on and on and on, right? And he was just so mad at himself about all these things. And I know that you're familiar with that because we all do it sometimes. We, we all have these times where we can think about the things like that, we're, that are going wrong or I need to do this better. And then it just like starts to spiral in our heads like oh I should have done that and I wish I had said this and on and on so I tickled the kid and I made him laugh and I reminded him of two things that we love him exactly as he is and God does too sometimes our minds are so jumpy or we go awfulizing you know that idea spiraling into why this and that and everything else is just awful and awful and awful. And so we get to things that don't even make sense anymore, that aren't even connected to reality. While he was going through his litany of problems and his poor life, um, he got to the point where he was mentioning, like, all my friends get to go to urban air way more than I ever do. And I was like, all right, kid, we got to rein this back in. You know, like, we've dived a little deep into the woe is me. Um, it's like when you have a bad sunburn, and all you can think about is how bad your shoulders feel, you know, uh, until your mind shifts to thinking about how bad your back hurts. And then if it can get off of that topic, then, you know, you think about the back of your knees or whatever. Our tendency is to focus on all of that. What we need is not to think more about our sunburn. What we need is aloe, right? <laughs> spread over us like this cold shield that dulls the pain everywhere and gives us relief. So we're going to read a very famous passage of the Bible this morning, but I don't want you to hear it as a litany of all the things you get wrong, okay? Uh, because Jesus is going to say, okay, do this, don't do this, and it's very easy, could be easy for you to say, oh man, well, Here's a condemnation of, well, I don't get that right, and I do this over here too. We are not soaking in the scripture today so that you can have an image of Jesus wagging his finger at you, okay? I want you to receive his teaching as aloe <laughs> for your souls. So here's your job, all right? As we read the scripture this morning, I'm asking that you do not focus on you in the scripture, but only focus instead on what the verse is saying about God. Can you handle that? Is that a, can we do that? Okay, let's go ahead and turn to the Bible. Um, there should be a blue Bible in the chair in front of you if you want to put the Bible in your hands. Of course, you can always pull it up on your device. We're going to be reading in Matthew chapter 6 today. I'll give you a second to find it. It's the first book in the New Testament, but you can see how far I have to go back in my Bible to get to it. I read from the CEB version, uh, but you can read whatever version works for you. This is a passage that is Jesus' teachings. So Jesus is the one speaking this entire thing, and it's located in what is called the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, so we're in six, chapter 6, starting in verse 25. Jesus says, Therefore I say to you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the sky. They don't sow seed or harvest grain or gather crops into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Who among you, by worrying, can add a single moment to your life? That's important. And why do you worry about clothes anyway? Notice how the lilies in the field grow. They don't wear themselves out with work and they don't spin cloth. But I say to you that even Solomon in all of his splendor was not dressed like one of these. If God dresses grass in the field so beautifully, 
even though it's alive today and tomorrow it's thrown into the furnace, won't God do much more for you, you people of weak faith? Therefore, don't worry and say, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? Gentiles long for all these things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, stop worrying about tomorrow, because tomorrow has enough worry of its own. Every day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay, here's the message, basically, in three words, God's got you, <laughs> okay? You have a God who cares enough about you that he's going to make sure you make it. That's the balm, okay, for every flare-up of worry. God's got you. Cover that worry with the knowledge that God's your God, and he's never going to leave you or forsake you. You can rest easy in that. Now, people use the word worry today to talk about a lot of things. So let's look at what it actually says in the original language in the Greek. Sometimes we use the word worry just to say like, oh, I'm a little worried about that, or meaning like we're concerned about it. It's something that we know we need to give a little attention to. That's not what Jesus is talking about here. The word in Greek is merimnate, okay? And throughout all of these verses, every single time it says worry, it's using the word merimnate, which means specifically a troubled thought, Okay? So it's not just something that you like, you have awareness that you need to be concerned about it, or maybe you should do something. It's something that's really troubling you. <laughs> and every time we talk about something like anxiety, I think it's important to say that while we are looking through the lens here of our spiritual tradition to see what it can offer us about anxiety, doctors and medicines also have a very important place in dealing with it. And it's not one or the other, but a lot of times it's both. And thank God that Jesus says what he does, because in one sentence he says, don't worry. Don't allow yourself to have troubling thoughts, which seems like a pretty high hill to climb, right? And then by the end of the passage, he says, well, don't worry about tomorrow, because each day has its own trouble, trouble, troubling thoughts. In other words, even while I tell you not to worry, I know that every single day is going to have its own troubling thoughts. It's going to bring up its own causes for worry. So I don't think the teaching here is that we should expect to like banish worry forever, but just not to live from that place, not to make decisions from that place, spending our time and our energy anticipating even more worry than what the day really will bring on its own. That's that there's things that we can do to diminish its power and influence over our lives. Now, Many people in our community are worried about the necessities in life. They don't know where food is coming from tonight. That's why we have our blessings box. They don't know how much longer they're going to have this roof over their head. Their kids are growing, and they can't afford to buy them new clothes. That's part of why we do Angel Tree. They're in survival. Are we really going to make it is their question. These are reasonable, troubling thoughts. And Jesus is teaching here, is that over time we can grow in trust that even in that kind of situation, God's got you. He uses his church body a lot of times to provide that care. But some of us are fortunate that we don't have to worry about whether or not we're going to have food tonight. And we don't have to wonder if we, can, if we have clothing to wear. Right? If we need those things, we go buy them. Done. But that doesn't stop us. <laughs> we just make up other things to worry about, right? A couple weeks ago, a friend told me something that has seriously troubled me ever since. Or at least he was a friend before he told me this. He said that this particular bug that exists that I hate so much that I won't even say the name of it, that researchers who study that bug gradually become allergic to it over time. That's weird. And that when they become allergic to it, they simultaneously become allergic to one other thing. Coffee. Specifically, pre-ground coffee. Let that sink in for a second. 
okay? When I realized what that meant, I was horrified. I put my face under a blanket. Days later, Wednesday morning, I was trying to pray before I got out of bed, and I couldn't because all I could think about was coffee. And now I need to change my life because it's never going to be the same, and whole bean coffee is going to be what I have for the rest of my life. Got to throw everything else out. It's what, is what my friend said true? I don't even know. I don't know. I haven't looked into it to see if the research is verified or if it's been peer-reviewed because I don't want to Google it and accidentally come across a picture of the thing. So I'm just living with worry, with a troubling thought. And now I've gifted that little tidbit of information onto you to ruin your lives too. You are welcome. That's the beautiful thing about worry though. Like it doesn't even have to be real. It just gives us something to think about. And it doesn't have to be, you know, tied with reality in any way at all. We are incredibly gifted at coming up with things to worry about. It's a talent. And if you don't have real things to worry about, you can just make some up just to fill the space in your brains. I mean, Jesus recommended substituting worry with seeking first, focusing our energy first on God's kingdom and on his righteousness, his justice. But why do that when you can worry instead? Now, What's the opposite of worry, friends? The opposite of worry is peace. Because you can't be, have one with the other, right? Like you can't be at peace and be worrying at the same time. It's not possible. They're mutually exclusive. If you're worrying, you're not at peace. If you're at peace, you're not worrying. They are opposites. So if we're over here in the land of worry, imagine this side is covered in mess and gunk and, and no clear paths. And, and over there is paradise, a beautiful garden or a beach at sunset or whatever. The land of peace is over there. What's the path that can get you from this area right here, the land of worry, over there to the land of peace? What's the bridge? Well, thankfully, God tells us it's in Philippians 4. That's where the bridge is. Let's hop on over to verses 6 and 7. Don't be, don't be anxious. Don't worry about anything. Rather, bring up all your requests to God in your prayers along with giving thanks. And then the what? Peace of God that surpasses understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Over here, you've got the option to live in anxiousness and worry if you want to. And over there, you've got the option of living in a depth of peace that is unreasonable, that doesn't make sense considering the circumstances. And what is the bridge from one to the other? Sharing your concerns with God and giving thanks. The way to let go of worry isn't to make yourself be at peace. You can't make yourself feel at peace. You can't just say, come on, mind, come on, heart, feel peace. And it magically happens for you. That's not how it works. Peace is a feeling. And it's also a fruit of the Spirit, which means it's a gift from God and not something you can create yourself. You can't force it or conjure it, but you know what you can choose? Gratitude. You can 100% choose to be thankful. That is within your power. And it just so happens that a byproduct of gratitude is peace. Gratitude paves the way from worry to peace. Michael Z is a member here at Asbury. I'm not like a huge fan of the word member because it kind of sounds like a country club. So let's say like ministry. He's a ministry partner here at Asbury. And one of the interesting facts of Michael's life is that he was adopted uh, by um, a father. Uh, he had his biological mom, um, but then he was adopted by um, a new dad. And he had this lovely family growing up. Life was good, but he admitted there, wa there was always this like nagging worry in the back of his mind, of course, of why his birth parents gave him up, of what he would find out about his father if he ever dared to look, of what kind of person he was and what that would mean about the kind of person that he is too. But then this incredible thing happened. There's this number one reality show in the country of Greece that is all about reunifying families. And his, his birth father's family reached out to the show and they found Michael 
and they flew him over there to be on a reality show in Greece, of all things. <laughs> Apparently, you can YouTube him. Um, anyway, and so, you know, he just ends up in Greece and on this show, and he gets to meet his birth family. And the whole thing made him so grateful that he had that experience that it turns out his birth family was very great people. They were really hospitable to him. They've kept in touch since all the things he learned. And reflecting back on it now, he says that ever since then, he's been more at peace about that whole part of his life. It's not something that flares up and worries him anymore because he had this experience that made him so grateful that now he said it was kind of like I felt, I wondered about what that meant for who I was, and now, now I don't have to worry about that anymore. Now, not everybody gets that. Not everybody gets that blessing, right? God tends to be able to heal in lots of different ways. It doesn't have to be through that kind of thing. But in his particular case, he, he had that experience which allowed him to be grateful, and the gratitude led to peace. So for those of you in the sanctuary today, you were handed a blank thank you note when you came in the doors. I encourage you to grab it. For those of you who are worshiping online, if you have a blank card somewhere in your house, you could go grab one now or you could get it after worship. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to write a thank you note to someone that would be surprised to learn that you're grateful for them. Okay, now that's important. It can't just be for your grandma, okay? Somebody that you'd be... <laughs> who would be surprised to learn that you are grateful for them. Maybe you have someone in particular in mind. Great, go ahead and write, dear whoever. Uh, you can do that right now. Well, right now in the message. Or maybe you just want to write a general note of thanks that a person is alive and in your life and that God saw fit to love them and create them. I want you to reflect for a moment how this person might be one of God's gifts to you. And what way you could end up experiencing this person as a gift in your life. So go ahead and spend a moment writing a thank you card to that person, okay? Okay, while you're right. Thanksgiving is not just a day. It is not just a prayer before a really delicious meal. It is a way of life every day. It's the way from worry into peace. And let me just point out the obvious. The bridge goes both ways right? Which means that not only is gratitude the way to get from worry to peace, but the way from being at peace to get back into worrying again is a lack of gratitude. You see that? And when we lose our ability to be thankful in any way, we just kind of start inching ourselves back across the bridge in the wrong direction. Now back in Matthew, our passage today ended with what some scholars have called the secret of Jesus. His one most important guidance for how to navigate life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. As one writer put it beautifully, the goal here is to be unself and in Christed. You might want to write that down. I'm thinking of making that a focus of my prayer life next year. The goal of being a disciple of our discipleship pathway here at Asbury is to be unself and in Christed. Our worries, though, distract us and feeble our ability to seek Christ first because they're begging to take first place in our lives. So gratitude not only paves the way to peace, but also paves the way to our ability to seek God's kingdom first, which is why he's talking about it in the very same passage. It clears the path of the worries so that God can be first. Now, Hastings gives this image of a woodsman wielding an axe, okay? And all of his skyward strokes are feeble, couldn't cut through a thing. Because even though he's using his power, the same power he's about to use to come down, he's working against the power of what? gravity, right? But the same arm then swings downward, and now each of the downward strokes has a double power, the power of his arm and the power of gravity, 
When we seek anything else first, friends, when we're scurrying around trying to put out fire after fire, chase down worry after worry, every single one of our strokes is an upward stroke. But when we live out the character of Christ, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, when we see Christ's will and purpose and goodness in the world, then we have not only the power of our own effort, but now we're joining with the power of God too, so everything we spend time and energy on is more powerful than anything that we could do on our own because it is in concert with God's power. You see how that works? Does that make sense? So I have a challenge for you today. Take that thank you note that you're working on or you will be working on and actually give it to that person this week. I know. But we can't only pray about gratitude. We actually have to live it. That's how we complete the prayer. So let's put it to work, okay? Because gratitude paves the way to peace. And it also paves the way to diminishing worry and paves the way to seeking Christ first. If you wrote a general note of thanks, then just hand it to somebody as you leave worship today. Or if you're worshiping at home, hand it to a person you come across this week. Let's walk the walk of gratitude until it lands us safely in the land of peace. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for your word because it's so rich and full and has something to speak to us all these years later. We pray, God, that, um, that we would be able to practice gratitude, that we would seek it out even when it's really, really hard, even when nothing about our circumstances make it easy to find a way to be grateful. Let's be seekers of it so that we can also be at peace and be peacemakers in the world and seek you first. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lindsay. What an amazing message to leave uh, worship with today and to head into the week of Thanksgiving. We have a new song that we um, encourage you to stand with us if you're in the sanctuary where we're going to sing. It is called I Thank God. It's appropriate uh, coming off of this message of... Um, being thankful to find peace in God. So let's sing together this morning.
band for just bringing worship home for us today. Thanks so much for being in worship with us. We hope we get to connect with you next Sunday. Prayer partners will be here um, if you'd like to have someone pray for you as we close out the service today. A couple things I want to remind you. If you want to hang out with us, we have pizza in the kitchen, and we're going to be putting up Christmas decorations right now. And also, if you're, as you're going out the sanctuary today, turn right and go over to the angel tree and uh, check out maybe one of those kids that you can bless this Christmas. This past week, we were able to share Thanksgiving with 75 families in our community. We are excited about that. We're praying blessings on their families, and we hope to do a similar thing at Christmas for our neighbors too. As we go from this place, remember God goes before you to show you the way, behind you to keep you moving, above you to watch over you, beside you to befriend you, and within you always to give you peace.